Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the program Enjoy Your Life based on the book Enjoy Your Life by Dr. Abdurrahman Al Arifi. And today we look at chapter 9 from the book Ma'al Fuqara. So, what the author is doing here is that he is highlighting the akhlaq of the Prophet وسلم, in specific reference to the poor people. And then he moves on to the akhlaq of the Prophet وسلم, in specific reference to the women. And then he moves on to the akhlaq of the Prophet وسلم, in specific reference uh, to the young and the children. And then he speaks about the akhlaq of the Prophet وسلم, with the animals. And then he speaks about the akhlaq of the Prophet وسلم, with the enemy. So basically what the author is, is highlighting here in the next few chapters is that uh, see how the Prophet of Allah dealt with the different groupings of society and with the different classes of society. He was good with everybody, not just the rich, but equally with the poor also. So with this preamble and this context in mind, let's look at today's chapter, which is titled Ma'al Fuqara with the Poor. And I'm sure, uh, I hope you are following with the discussion and I, I hope you also have the book with you enjoy your life by dr abdurrahman al arifi and by the way you can secure a copy from the net you can download the pdf version of this book and you can follow the discussion when we are doing it here on the uh, on the program so the program the, the 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 book is available for free as a pdf file on the net enjoy your life you can follow the english and i'll keep you busy with the arabic inshallah on my side uh, but the content is the same, mashaAllah. So the author starts off today's discussion by saying, عَدَدٌ مِّنَ النَّاسِ الْيَوْمَ أَخْلَاقُهُمْ تِجَارِيَّةٌ He says, Unfortunately, many people use their good character and their akhlaq as a mere tool of business. As a mere tool of business. What he means? What he means is that, that we well know that we need to be kind to the manager or to the supervisor or the director or the person above us. And he says that the reason why we are being kind to them is because we want to land that job. So you come for an interview, uh, you're not being nice and genuine because you are nice and genuine. You are only being nice and genuine because you want to secure that job, number one. Number two, he says, for example, you need to buy a certain product from somebody. So you've been nice to them. Hey, how's it, man? How's things going? You're not asking out of genuine care, but you're only doing it so that you can secure a deal with that person or you can get a discount. You know, we like discounts. So you only be nice because you want, you want a discount from a person. So he says that unfortunately, we have reduced akhlaq to business sense. That what benefit can I get from this person if I be nice to him? You know, um, you want uh, maybe some perks or you want to secure a seat at the next function. So you call up your friend, you be nice to him, you do unto things for him, not out of genuine care, but because you want a seat at the next function at the VIP area, you know? So uh, he says, unfortunately, we use akhlaq as a tool to secure our worldly benefits and to use it as a business model purely. And that is not good. So he says, فَالْغَنِيُّ فَقَدْ هُوَ الَّذِي تَكُونُ نُكْتَتُهُ طَرِيفًا فَيَضْحَكُونَ عِنْدَ سَمَاعِهَا وَأَخْطَأُهُ صَغِيرًا فَيَتَغَادُونَ عَنْهَا He says, unfortunately, our relationship with the rich is 
that when a rich makes when a rich man makes a joke when a rich man cracks a joke then suddenly his joke is funny and you laugh at his joke even though you know at the bottom of your heart that this joke what is cracking <laughs> you know has no flavor to it has no oomph has no spice to it has no kick to it the joke is a dry joke is a boring joke but you laughing at his joke simply because of who he is simply because of who he is and likewise he says have you noticed how people are with the rich people when a rich man makes a mistake then his mistake is insignificant tolerable small you can ignore it you can you know you can uh, brush it under the carpet you don't have to really worry about it you can nip it in the bud ah, it's not so serious it's not so, so serious It's a small mistake. Don't worry. It's a small mistake. أَمَّا الْفُقَرَاءَ فَنُكْتَتُهُمْ ثَقِيلًا يُسْخَرُ بِهِمْ عِنْدَ سَمَاعِهَا وَأَخْطَاؤُهُمْ جَسْمِيَّةً وَجَسِيمًا يُسْرَخُ بِهِمْ عِنْدَ وُقُوعِهَا He says, have you ever seen how we treat poor people? When a poor man makes a joke, nobody's laughing. <laughs> When a poor man makes a joke, nobody is laughing and he says on top of it when a poor man makes a mistake it's magnified it's amplified you accentuate it you make a big deal out of it you make a mountain out of a molehill and you say hey what a big ya allah what a big mistake you made what a big mistake ya allah i don't know how you're going to recover from this mistake So when a poor man makes a mistake it's suddenly a big thing when a when a rich man makes a mistake then no 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 you know malana we all make mistakes you know sheikh we all make mistakes it's fine you know you don't don't don't, don't think too much about it so <laughs> with the rich we different and with the poor we are different that's all the author is saying and he says when you look at the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam fa kana atfuhu على الغني والفقير سوا when you look at the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was kind to the rich and he was kind to the poor person also equally his good akhlaq extended to the poor and it extended to the rich also subhanallah subhanallah what is what an amazing point uh, in his gathering he had abdurrahman ibn auf was wealthy in his gathering he had uthman ibn affan was a millionaire in his gathering he also had bilal ibn rabah salman al farisi khabbab ibn al arat these are poor companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam abu huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu these are poor companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so in one gathering He had the rich, he had the poor. His good akhlaq extended to the rich and it extended to the poor also. And let me make this point here. Let me make this point here. You see in life we get two extremes. The one extreme is you are very good and kind to the to the, to the poor people and you give no respect, no regard, no kindness no compassion to the rich people that's not right that is wrong that's extremism you can't just you can't despise a person because of wealth because that's not the akhlaq of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he wasn't like that he was kind to both so the one extremism is that you good to the to poor to the poor at the expense of the rich the other extreme is that you are good to the rich at the expense of the poor meaning um, you would go out of your way for the rich people and you do nothing for the poor people so that is also extremism and the path of moderation is the path of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam because he was equally good to the rich and equally good to the poor that is a brilliant point to keep in mind and that is an important point to keep in mind my brothers and sisters that our akhlaq is supposed to extend to everybody 
And you have to ask yourself this question, that the people that work for us and the people that are under us, how do we treat them? And how do we treat the people who are, whom we work for? We are, we are uh, not showing the, the same akhlaq everywhere. So the Prophet wasallam was good to everybody. And with this kind of akhlaq, the Prophet of Allah made inroads with everybody. What did the Quran say? What did the Quran say? Wasbir nafsaka ma'al ladhina yad'oona rabbahum bil ghadati wal ashiyyi yuriduna wajha. O Nabi of Allah, you must associate with the poor companions. The poor companions who worship Allah in the morning and at night and who remember Allah abundantly, you must be associating with them, O Nabi of Allah. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also had the option of being rich, of being wealthy. He had the option of turning the mountains of Tihama, the mountains of Mecca into gold. But he did not do that. He chose to live a life of simplicity and poverty and he associated with the poor people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the understanding there. And as I wrap up this segment here, that we need to understand that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam did not cut off one class of society at the expense of other. But he was good with both of them. May Allah bless us all. Ya Rasulullah, ya Habibullah, ya Rasulullah, ya Habibullah. Welcome back to the program. Enjoy your life. We are busy with the chapter on how the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam dealt with the poor people. And continuing with the chapter, there's a lovely story mentioned here which speaks about the Prophet Sallallahu exemplary akhlaq with the poor people. So, وَكَانَ كَانَ رَجُلٌ مِّنْ أَهْلِ الْبَادِيَةِ اسْمُهُ زَاهِرُ بْنُ الْحَرَامِ There was a companion who was very poor and his name was Zahir bin Haram. Zahir he was from the village, he was a poor person, but he kept a good relation with the Prophet ﷺ. And every now and then he would visit Medina, he would bring something from the village for the Prophet of Allah, and the Prophet of Allah would give him something and they would exchange gifts. So this story is about him, Zahir radiallahu ta'ala an. So he says, وَكَانَ رُبَّمَا جَاءَ الْمَدِينَ فِي حَاجَةٍ فيهدي للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من البادية شيئا من إقط أو سمن. The Prophet صلى الله صلى الله عليه وسلم had good relations with this Sahabi Zahir رضي الله تعالى عن. Zahir was from the village, and every time he visited the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he would bring something that was exclusive to the village. For example, he would bring cheese and he would bring butter. Cottage cheese and butter for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Whenever he visited, he would do so. And uh, it reminds me of certain people in my life also. May Allah give them good health and long life. Some have passed on. Some some are still alive. But I know of this gentleman. Whenever he would visit Lanasia, he was out of town. But whenever he would come to Lanasia for work. He made it a point. He would just bring some, a loaf of bread or sometimes some scones or sometimes some, some naan and he would drop it off. He would say, Mulana, make dua for me. I'm so happy to see you and I'm leaving. Please give me ijazah. It used to be a brief, a brief interaction, maybe just two, three minutes. But he made it a point that whenever he would come to Lanasia, he would pop in, pop by, and he would bring something. It was an unannounced uh, visit that he would make every now and then. And there are some people, mashallah, that still continue to do that. 
uh, even up to this point. So this Sahabi, Zahir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he used to come from the village. And whenever he came from the village, he brought something for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He would bring cheese or butter or something of the other. Uh, what we learn from here is that when you go to visit the pious people, take something with Make it a common practice in your life. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in return, إِذَا أَرَادَ أَنْ يَخْرُجَ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ تَمْرٍ وَنَحْوِهِ فَيُهْجِزَهُ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in return, would also give him something. He used to ask Zahir, when are you going back home? When are you going back to the village? And when he would find out, he would say, please pass the house. I have also prepared something for you. And the Prophet of Allah would give him dates, or anything that he had in the house. So Zahir would give him something uh, when he would come to Medina, and the Prophet ﷺ would also give him something when he was leaving Medina. What a lovely relationship he enjoyed with this poor Sahabi, poor. A uh, very um, down-to-earth person, and a person who did not have any, uh, any major background to him. But yet the Prophet of Allah had such a close relationship with him. So, وَكَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يُحِبُّهُ وَكَانَ يَقُولْ إِنَّ زَاهِرًا بَادِيَتَنَا وَنَحْنُ حَاضِرُوهُ The Prophet of Allah used to love him a lot. He was very fond of him. And he used to say to the Sahaba that Zahir is our village and we are his city. Meaning, we get from Zahir things that we don't get in a city. And we give back to Zahir, which he don't get in the village. This was uh, a very affectionate address and a very uh, comforting address from the Prophet wasallam. And, and you know, when, when somebody visits you from far and wide, there are something exclusive that is, uh, that is found in their area, which is not found in your area. When they bring it, you, you feel so nice. You feel so nice. So the Prophet ﷺ used to refer to Zahir. Zahir is our village and we are his city. Subhanallah. وَكَانَ زَاهِرًا دَمِيمًا The author says that Zahir was not a very handsome person. He wasn't very handsome. He was dark in complexion. And he did not come across very handsome also. But the Prophet ﷺ was very fond of him. So he says that one day, خَرَجَ زَاهِرٌ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ يَوْمًا مِنْ بَادِيَتِهِ One day, Zahir رضي الله تعالى عنه came to visit the Prophet ﷺ from the village. فَأَتَى بَيْتَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ فَأَتَى بَيْتَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ He came to the house of the Prophet ﷺ. فَلَمْ يَجِدُهُ And he asked, is the Prophet of Allah around? They told him, no, he's not around. Uh, he's gone out. So Zahir said, anyways, um, I have brought something for him. وَكَانَ مَعَهُ مَتَاعٌ And he gave it to the family and he said, I'm going to the marketplace. He went to the marketplace with the intention of doing some business. فَلَمَّا عَلِمَ بِهِ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَضَى إِلَى السُّوقِ يَبْحَثُ عَنْهُ When the Prophet of Allah came home, they told him, O Nabi of Allah, today Zahir came to visit you, but you were not around. Uh, currently he's gone to the marketplace, he's gone for some business. So the Prophet وسلم, said, okay, I'm going to go look for him. I'm going to go look for him. فَأَتَاهُ فَإِذَا هُوَ يَبِيعُ مَتَاعَهُ The Prophet of Allah came to the marketplace and he saw him that he was standing in one corner and he was selling his merchandise. وَالْعِرْقُ يَتَصَبَّبُ مِنْهُ And he found that the Zahir radiallahu ta'ala was sweating profusely. He was sweating profusely because He's standing under the scorching sun and it is hot and it, and it is a, a, a summer's day and he's in Medina in the marketplace. He was sweating profusely. وَثِيَابُهُ ثِيَابُ أَهْلِ الْبَادِيَةِ بِشَكْلِهَا وَرَائِحَتِهَا And he was wearing clothes that were uh, known to be clothes of the villagers. Meaning he wasn't dressed like, an uh, like a person of the town like a person of uh, the city. He was dressed like a villager, like a simpleton, as you would say. He was dressed with simple clothes, like a simple person. So what happened is that the Prophet ﷺ, فَاحْتَضَنَهُ مِنْ وَرَائِهِ 
the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came from behind and he closed his eyes like this. He placed his eyes, I mean he placed his hands on the eyes of Zahir radiallahu ta'ala anhu and he blocked it off. He was playing a game with him. He was being uh, playful with Zahir radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So Zahir from the front is not understanding what's happening. Who, who would block his eyes? Who is this person from behind? وَزَاهِرٌ لَا يُبْصِرُ وَلَا يَدْرِي مَنْ أَمْسَكَهُ Zahir has no clue that who's blocking his eyes, who's standing from uh, the back and, and, and blocking him uh, from doing business. فَفَزَعَ زَاهِرٌ وَقَالْ أَرْسِلْنِي مَنْ هَذَا So Zahir became anxious and he said, please leave me, please leave me. Who is this that's holding me from the back? Who's covering my eyes? Who's this? فَسَكَتَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. So the Prophet of Allah did not reply and he just kept quiet. He carried on playing a game with him. He carried on playing a game with him. فَحَاوَلَ زَاهِرٌ أَنْ يَتَلَخَّصَ مِنْ مِنَ الْقَبْضَةِ Zahir tried to get out of the grip of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But he couldn't. He was locked. The Prophet of Allah from the back and covering him from the front. And Zahir is trapped in between. And he's trying his best and he can't get out of the grip of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So then what happened is that he tried to look at the back. And anyways, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him it's him that it is the Prophet ﷺ, and he also saw that it was the Nabi of Allah ﷺ. When he saw him, he became happy. فَطْمَأَنَّتْ نَفْسُهُ وَسَكَنَ فَزَعُهُ He became happy. The Prophet ﷺ was behind him and he realized that it is the Prophet of Allah. So, وَصَارَ يُلْسِقُ ظَهْرَهُ بِصَدْرِهِ He became so comfortable that he started reclining against the Prophet ﷺ's Mubarak chest. Just to draw from the comfort and the blessings of the Prophet ﷺ. So the joke continues or the playfulness continues. The Prophet ﷺ then said, uh, Who is going to buy the slave from me? May yashtari hadha minni, may yashtari hadha minni. I am selling a slave. Who's going to buy the slave from me? And uh, uh, Zahir said, Oh Nabi of Allah, nobody's going to be interested in me. You can see how I look shabby, with no real class to me, and I don't even have a beautiful complexion, who's going to be interested in me? Nobody's going to be interested in me. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no, 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 no. لَسْتَ بِكَاسِدٍ أَنْتَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ غَال The Prophet of Allah said, Zahir, no, no, no. You might think of yourself as nothing and nobody in this world, but wallahi in the eyes of Allah, you are expensive. Wallahi, in the eyes of Allah, you are precious. Wallahi, in the eyes of Allah, you are valuable. And the Prophet Sallallahu assured him and comforted him in these, way, uh, in these words. So the point here that is that the Prophet Sallallahu was so good. He was good to the poor and he was good to the rich. And this story that I shared with you today from the book highlights the exemplary akhlaq of the Prophet ﷺ. Would you be comfortable sitting and talking to your worker or somebody who's sweating and perspiring and, and smelling and, and has an odor to them? Would you be comfortable sitting with them? The Prophet of Allah did it. Would you be comfortable interacting and engaging with them? The Prophet of Allah did it, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So today's chapter is an important one that we should be kind and generous to the poor also. Speak to them with respect. Show them the akhlaq. Treat them as equals. Do not regard them as less. And allow them to mix with you also and be good to them. This is the akhlaq of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah bless us all. Ameen. Ya Rasul, ya Rasul.